Wasabi, you guys. Welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced 6.2. And we are going to deal with trickier cases of sum of inverses. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So we have this case. Again, this looks like a random function plus another random function. You know, this, there must be a purpose to this, right? So again, it looks like two completely random functions. But I do want to check if there are inverses of each other. They might not be. Uh, let's start with this because this looks easier to find the inverse with. So ln of 1 plus x cubed. Let's see. We do e to the y minus 1 to cube root. Okay, so there's an inverse. Um, this looks nothing like our inverse function huh so what do we do so do we just ignore this and just algebraically solve both functions or we can force we can force this function to become similar to this inverse is there a way we can do that maybe we possibly could if you think about it what if we let x what if we let x equal e to the u minus one and then here e to the u minus one plus one Ooh, we just get e to the u which might cancel out with our dx of e to the u du Ooh. so there is something we could do there's, so there's that. All right, we'll do that. Rather than uh, doing integration part by parts or tedious stuff with these two functions. Okay, so let's do that. So we have 0 to 1, ln 1 plus x cubed. Okay. And then we let x equal e to the u minus 1. So now what we have is, let's see, if we plug in, we, let's see, if x was 1, then we need e to be ln of 2, right? So that means this needs to be ln of 2. Then we get e to the u minus 1 over e to the u with e to the u du, okay, of course they cancel out, and then plug in 0, let's see, if x is 0, the 1 equals e to the u, u must be 0. Okay, so this is what we have. So we technically have this, ln of 2, and voila, we have our inverse. Now, just because we have our inverse, can we put it in inverse sum, uh, sum of inverses, right? What that means, what I mean is, if when we test the bounds, does it fit uh, to be, uh, does it correspond to the inverse, right? Because that needs to happen, right? If you remember, you remember our formula right whenever we have a b f of x it must be added with f of a okay and f of b for the inverse in order for this to work right these bounds has to correspond from this function right if they don't then we're kind of screwed and we cannot use the sum of inverse formula thankfully you can easily see that when we plug in 1, we get ln of 2. Plug in 0, we get 0, because ln of 1 is 0. So thankfully, this does fit uh, with our sum of inverse formula. So that means that this whole integral here equals to ln of 2. OK? And that's our answer. All right, that was very sneaky. Uh, pretty much where we literally do a force u substitution 
to forcefully format it in terms of a sum of inverse. It's very hard to see, uh, but with a lot of practice, um, you get more comfortable with it. Uh, you m might not see this as much. It's not a very popular uh, case, but it's, it's definitely something that you should be aware of. Okay? Whenever you have some two, if you're just given some two random algebraic functions, it's a little suspicious. It's a little suspicious. Maybe check for inverses. Okay? This, is, this one's also a very, very tricky um, sum of inverses. Okay? So, we have 2 to the power of square root of x, and we have ln square 1 plus x. So, suspicious. They seem to be s almost similar, uh, similarly inverses. Uh, but let's check. Let y equal ln square of 1 plus x. Let's see, square root of y e 1 plus x is minus 1. Okay, so we have our inverse. So x, so our inverse is e to the square root of y minus 1. We have, what is this? What is this? Well, if we do a loophole log, e to the ln of 2 times square root of x, ln square 2. Huh. Interesting. So we have... Huh. We we want e to the square root of x minus one, but we have e to we have something oddly different, right? So what do we do here? So we we have to modify this somehow, uh, but how do we do it? Let's see. Maybe we we have to do some sort of a u substitution. Ah, maybe that's where this ln square comes from, right? If I put ln of 2 inside of a square root so that I can do a u substitution with x for some constant, in this case our constant is ln square of 2. And maybe that's why we have an ln square of 2 here. Aha! Got it. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to let u equal x ln square of 2. And what this would give us so this will give us, let's see, plug in 0, we get 1, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, uh, u, u is right here. Plug in 0, we get 0, okay. Plug in 1, you just get ln square to where we're substituting, okay. So now, in that case, what we have, well, I guess I'll keep it in yellow. Is now what we have is e to the square root of u and then that ln square is gone because of the du plus and then we have 0 1 ln square of 1 plus x okay e to the square root of u du ln square of 1 plus x so are we done Wait, but wait a minute. This one has a minus 1. The inverse of this function is e to the square root of y minus 1. We need that minus 1, right? Yes, we do. We need that minus 1. If we are going to use the sum of inverses, it has to be completely an inverse. So we need a minus 1. And we could do a plus 1. And now we have plus 1. Uh, du or dx. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, du. Du, it has to be du, and the reason why I say that is because our bounds are different. So it's not 0 to 1, it's 0 to ln of square of 2, because it came from here, right? We add, we did a minus 1 here, we have to do a plus 1. I just decided to put it all the way back here. Okay, so now here, you want to make sure that our bounds fit, right? If I plug in ln square of 2, we get ln of 2, ln of 2, it's 2 minus 1, that's 1, beautiful. 
plug in 0, we get e to the 0, 1 minus 1, we get 0. Awesome, so it works. So we have, by sum of inverses, this, this whole portion here is equal to ln square of 2. Okay, plus, and over here, this is also equal to ln square of 2 as well. So our answer, our answer is 2 times the ln square of 2. 2 ln square of 2. And that is our answer. This is our last integral. This one I just kind of made up. Uh, you could easily see that. <laughs> But here, uh, what do we do? You're probably thinking, what if we let u equal x minus 1, since x minus 1 is everywhere? If we let u equal x minus 1, OK? We get 0 to 1. We have inverse tangent of cube root of x plus x cube. 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, I'm just interchanging variables for now. All right, so now what? What is this inverse here? The inverse of inverse tangent of cube root of x. All right, let's see, tangent cube of y. So we have tangent cube as our inverse. Um, but this looks nowhere close to our uh, tangent cube. However, huh, 1 plus x squared, that's very suspicious, right? Tan let x equal tangent theta. Interesting. Very interesting. I think, I think we just, I think we know where this is going, right? From 0 to 1, we have tangent cube root of x plus, and then from 0 to pi over 4, when we let x equal uh, tangent theta, we get tangent cube theta. Secant square theta is going to cancel out with 1 plus x squared. So we end up with this. And this does indeed fit our inverse tangent cube theta. Awesome. So now what we have here is we have our inverses. Now, do, they, do the bounds match? 1 plug in 1, we get pi over 4. Plug in zero, we get zero. Awesome. Yes, it does. So that means that we can use the sum of inverses. So let's go ahead. Right, this whole equals this whole integral equals pi over four. Okay. Uh, sometimes there will be people where uh, we're so caught into just using sum of inverses straight away. I feel like that might use more steps because of the minus one, but uh, I think this way is much faster. So I mean, again, to not overcomplicate things, right? If you if you see some, you know, something obvious or try you subbing it, go ahead and just just do it, right? Just let u equal x minus one, and that most likely uh, simplify things a lot cleaner. Okay, if something does go wrong, then you take a step back, uh, you know, go back to step one or go back to, uh, to the previous step that you did, and then try it without letting u equal x minus one, or etc. Okay? All right, that's about it. That is for our sum of inverses. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helps, and I'll see you guys in the next part. See ya.